you see a lot of intelligence in those elephants. They're very socially aware. They look for other males to pal up with. They'll chase and roll around with others. They have their own bonds and their own family. So they will be always the, the leader, the one that always uh, guide the whole group, which in this case, that would be Denum. Uh, he was in a very bad condition when we found him. Emaciated and dehydrated, very skinny. There was no herd nearby, so it's a big mystery as to where he came from. If the rescue unit rangers hadn't found him when they did, he wouldn't have survived. The Wildlife Rescue Unit specializes in helping folks when they have issues with animals. They get all sorts of calls, everything from elephants down to small snakes and they do an excellent job of moving the animals. They want to keep them in the wild as much as they can. Unfortunately, the reality is that you can't just take in an orphan, give them some food, and release them back out into the forest on their own. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is really hard. Since they get used to humans, they get close contact with humans. When we rescue them, they are being fed every two hours. They literally take our rangers as a surrogate mother. When you find a baby elephant, I would say below two years old, they really depend on the mother. So if an elephant is alone on its own, even if, if they want to, to eat, they cannot do it. Um, we have found some elephants that literally they have been eating mud or soil just for the fact that they are hungry and they, they want to eat something. They don't have the resources to give them the life that they want to give them when they have them in captivity, and there's no place to release them to. They take them out to the lake where they can play several times a day. They can uh, wrestle around with each other and play in the mud, uh, but they're also trying to teach them some skills so that they can take care of them later in life as they get larger. And that's kind of where we can come in. One of the things that we're doing is funding two full-time elephant keepers. Vincent and the other rangers are incredibly passionate about the elephants that they care for. We do not have all the food that an elephant requires, so the, the rangers on their own, they go and collect extra fruit from the areas nearby. It's a hard job, but they do it because they know the animals need it. They're doing it because they care about the future of Borneo. And to allow us to just have a small part in that is incredibly meaningful. And I think it was because of that relationship that we had built that I was able to work this small elephant, Dan, and teach him a very simple behavior, which was to put its nose on its head, which is like teaching your dog to sit. It's almost the first behavior you teach an elephant because they're always out sniffing and moving their trunk around. So if you can control where the trunk goes, you know that you have their attention. But the best part about it was looking around the room and watching other rangers watching what I was doing and start to practice that with the other elephants, showing them that with some small steps, you can make huge gains with the animals and the care that you're able to provide. What it's going to mean is that the elephants are not only going to participate in their care, they're going to be able to act more like elephants. What makes the human-elephant conflict in Borneo so complex is that they're running out of space and resources for these young elephants that they have to care for. They're finding more elephants than they have space for. They don't have the capacity to give them the lives that they want to give them. To talk about that in future, it's at this point, very uncertain. To be very, very, very honest, there are some days when I wake up and I feel very, very hopeful. And uh, when I see how the Wally Risky Unit Rangers work and work very hard and the job they do, and I, that makes me feel hopeful. They literally lift me up and I say, okay, guys, let's do this. We can do this. We can do more for wildlife. This little bit that we are doing, it means a lot. If we don't take action, the extinction of the Bornean elephants in our lifetime is a possibility. How do they prevent orphans from coming into captive care? How do they educate young kids to respect the elephants that are damaging their communities? There's no simple answer to a complex question. And this is a very complex situation. You have elephants that are destroying people's livelihoods. You have palm oil plantations that are encroaching on the forests and young elephants that are being separated from their herd as they're pushed out of those spaces. 
Uh, you have elephants that are getting caught in snares that are in the jungle. Folks that are trying to feed their family to catch small prey are unintentionally snaring elephant legs. If I can have a magic wound that I can make people understand to live in harmony with elephants, and not only elephants, but wildlife, we are sharing the same earth, then I will be more optimistic on, on Dynam's future. So what we are doing now is trying our best, not only with the elephants, but also with public awareness and education, so we can have a more promising future, not only for Danum, but for all the elephants that we rescue.